Good morning, church. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And he still is risen as well. This is the second Sunday of the Easter season, and it's good to be with you this day. And what a shame that, you know, this is called Low Sunday. Look around. You know, compared to last Sunday, um, it, what a shame. What a shame. I mean, Easter is still being celebrated. There's still that joy and that life that Christ gives to us. And we pray that the bus um, is coming in right now and uh, unloading a few people. But uh, good to be with you this day. And we are so grateful to um, have your joyful presence here to continue to share your praises and hallelujahs to your Lord and God. And we've got that the altar is still beautifully adorned there um, because from Easter. The lilies are, are singing as well, and so may you sing loudly this day as well, singing the joy of God's love in Christ Jesus. And so let us begin, therefore, with a word of prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that Easter is just not a day, but it's truly a season, and that we continue with, with bold voices, proclaim your greatness. And so, dear Lord, be with us now as we honor you, glorify your holy name in this worship service. May our focus be upon you and the word that speaks of Jesus Christ as the risen Lord and Savior. So bless our time of worship now, remove all distractions, and may we look unto you and know the precious love that comes through the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our Savior and Redeemer in Jesus Christ. We pray in his holy and life-giving name. Amen. Amen. May we stand and sing, Jesus shall reign. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
And let us pray. O oh God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear the reading of God's holy word. Good morning. The first lesson is from Acts chapter 5, beginning in verse 12. The apostle performed many signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together at Solomon's colony. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their numbers. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on the beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the door of the jails and brought them out. Go, stand in the temple of the court, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. This is the word of our Lord. Good morning. Good morning. To the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord of God who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard the wind behind me, a loud voice like a trumpet which said, write on a scroll, what you see, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyra, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May we stand for the gospel acclamation. Mm -hmm. 
Alleluia. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The Holy Gospel from St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, and Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is most definitely the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated as we sing, I know my Redeemer lives.
Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the resurrection and life, the one who has come to be Savior and Redeemer now, that you might have life eternal yourself. Amen. Amen. Did you pay your income taxes? <laughs> they were due a few days ago. Um, yeah, a few days ago. And they, were, they actually gave us some extra time this year, too, a couple more days. But we paid our income taxes. I did a few weeks ago myself there. I used the new form, I think, 1040EZABC or something like that. You know, the one that says line A, what was your income last year? Write it down. Line B, how much do you have left? <laughs> line C, send in line B. <laughs> that one. Yeah, that one. Kind of reminds me of the... Um, the statement that you've heard so often that there are only two things certain in life, death and taxes. I'm, you've probably seen that cartoon of the two Roman soldiers, you know, standing in front of Jesus' empty tomb. And one of the soldiers has his mouth open and says, I guess there's only one thing that's certain now. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah, that's what it is, I think, and this is that time of year. But we believe that because the tomb is open, that there was no one in there, that Jesus is alive. That's what it symbolizes. And that means for you and me that there is salvation as well. We believe in what that word of God says, that there is life, that there is life eternal, and that Jesus lives and lives with us here at this very moment in your heart. He is with us to help and to guide us as well as to bring us to life and to salvation. That's what our faith says. But, you know, there is that other common adage there in life that says seeing is believing. And that's kind of what we go by. Seeing is believing. That's kind of our normal way of thinking here as a human being. You know, for instance, if somebody says, do you want to um, uh, buy my um, classic car, you know, which is finally finished and it's got low mileage, I mean, you're going to not only want to see it, you're going to want to drive that car, right? You're not just going to buy it unseen. No, you need to more than that. You know, you've got to be there and be part of that. Or you might remember, you know, some years ago, when somebody asks you to go on a blind date and you don't want to hear the words from that person, well, he or she has a good personality. You want to see that person before you go on that date. Seeing is believing. Now, what is your perception of the disciple Thomas? Well, there's one word that comes to your mind immediately. Doubting Thomas. That's how he's tagged. That's what his label is. That here is the one who doubted. And yet, I think we see Thomas as somebody as, you know, maybe somebody, maybe somebody in the background, you know, doesn't say too much. Maybe the disciple there, maybe had a lot of questions. I don't know. Maybe it was the other side of it. But he's always kind of skeptical. You know, that's the kind of way we picture Thomas there. Always the guy there was, eh, I'm not too sure about that, you know. Got to think about that more thoroughly, you know, because he again is labeled as a doubter. And yet, the Bible doesn't call him that. That's us saying that about the disciple Thomas. Because we see what's there in the Bible. And no doubt, no doubt, he doubted Jesus' resurrection. He definitely did. But we got to be careful and not just to type him because of that incident. There are other times in the Bible where we see him in a different light. For instance, in John chapter 11. John chapter 11, Jesus finds out that his good friend Lazarus is very, very sick. Jesus wants to go to Lazarus. The other disciples say, no, Jesus, don't go there. People want to kill you. But Thomas, he says, let us go there and die with him. Now, does that sound like a chronic doubter there who's saying words like that? 
So think of Thomas maybe in a little bit different way and think of a little bit of yourself, maybe a lot of bit of yourself in Thomas as well. See, Thomas, he, he wanted to be a medical examiner, a, a CSI. You know, here is a guy who said, unless I see the mark in your hands, unless I put my hand in your side, I will not believe. And frankly, in the original language, that's a double negative there. I in no way will believe. You know, it's a real emphasize that he is not going to believe unless he sees first. And so he wanted some forensic evidence. Well, thankfully, when Jesus comes along a week later and he gives it to him. And he says clearly to Thomas there, he says, Thomas, you know, put your hand here in those marks. Touch my side. Stop doubting and believe. And what is Thomas' response? My Lord, my God. Wow. Couldn't believe it. You know, that's one of the first confessions that you find in the Bible. The first Christian confessions. There. It's not the first, but it's one of the first Christian confessions there. So blunt, right there. Thomas, with faith, saying, yes, I believe. Yeah, Jesus would show him. But doubts come into people's minds, and that's quite human. There's one individual... Somebody you actually know, um, at least you know, he's a historical figure, American history historical figure. Very, very intelligent individual. Extremely so. But you know, he did not believe in miracles. Not any kind of miracles. And so what did he do when it came to the Bible? Well, he wrote his own Bible and took out the miracles. Which means he took out the virgin birth, he takes out Jesus walking on water. He takes out the part where Jesus fed 10,000 with some fish and bread. And of course, he took out the resurrection. He takes it all out. So what's left? What was left were just the moral teachings of Jesus, which he appreciated very, very much. He takes all of that out and just leaves the historical content of who Jesus is. In fact, his Bible ends this way. Jesus died on the cross. They put him in the tomb. They rolled a stone in front of the sepulcher and they departed. That was the end of his Bible. Now this guy's name was Thomas also. And he really was calling the disciples liars, frankly. Liars because of all those incidents where Jesus showed himself to the disciples and, and so, so many people. Well, this man's name was Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson took the resurrection out of the Bible. And I'm afraid he took the resurrection out of his own life as well. Doubt. Doubt creeps into our lives. Happens all the time. Yes, Jesus died. No doubt. Yes, Jesus was put into a tomb, no doubt. Jesus rose from that tomb. Huh? <laughs> really? How can that be? God dying, you say, and then God rising again? The doubt starts coming into our world. And it does in a very personal way in all kinds of places. See, doubt in one place can lead to doubt somewhere else, too. I mean, we have doubts every time your application is denied. And we have doubts when you or a loved one are going through some serious illness. Doubts come in. We have doubts when we have a financial crisis. There are doubts when there's a family problem. Doubts, always doubts. Doubts, I don't have any more to give. You know, I'm just tired and weary. I don't have anything more spiritually. I can't keep doing this. You know, the doubts just keep creeping into our world. And doubt really brings forth fear. Or maybe it's the fear that brings forth the doubts. It happens one way or the other. Look at those disciples. They were still in fear with locked doors. 
You see, they had doubts at that time, even though Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, you know, they, they saw the empty tomb, still, they were like, I, I, don't, I don't get this. They seemed to be uncertain, and they were afraid. They were afraid of those Romans who were now going to arrest them because they were followers of Jesus. You see the doubts that still happened even then. They needed the assurance again and again that Jesus was alive. And so they need to see him again. Truly believe this wasn't some mirage at all, but this was truly Jesus in front of them. And so doubts and fears go hand in hand. And doubts and fears really take away the, the joy of the resurrection of the body. It's what they do. They take it away because now you're saying, you know, Jesus has flesh and blood again. I'm going to have flesh and blood when I rise. You see, it, doesn't, it takes away all that joy there because... You're just thinking of a spirit world of some sort. No, Jesus truly is alive. And he is flesh and blood. He is that way after the resurrection. And that's why we emphasize in the Apostles' Creed the resurrection of the body. Make sure you hear and say that boldly this day. And so we have that. And yet those fears and the doubts, they rob yourself of joy as well. That joy that says that, you know, I may be weary, and yet there's a peace still in my heart. That joy which says that, yes, Jesus Christ has risen for me, and therefore my life is secure now and eternally. Yeah, that joy. It robbed the other disciples when, when Thomas comes along and says, well, I don't know if I believe. You know, the other disciples are like on cloud nine and like it comes down a little bit. And so you're actually robbing the others of joy as well. But here comes Jesus. He comes to Thomas. He comes to you and me too. And Jesus says to Thomas in a very personal way, Thomas, you know these wounds? I did this for you. I suffered on that cross for you. I died, I was in pain, I suffered on your behalf that you would have forgiveness of sins, that you would be accepted by God the Father, that you might enter eternal rest. And then the story actually still continues. It doesn't just end with our closing credits and swelling music and the curtain coming down at that point. Notice what Jesus says next. Very important in that gospel. He said, blessed are those like you who have seen and believe. But really, blessed are those who have not seen and believe. Have not seen and believe. See, Jesus is talking about the future. He's talking about you and me at this point. Who have not seen Jesus physically and yet believe. And then John picks up on that in his gospel. In the last verse there, really important, he says, these words have been written. These words have been written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and in believing, you would have life in his name. That's why the word is there. That's why we have the Bible right there. What else do you have? You don't get to see Jesus in the flesh right in front of you in that physical way. Not that way as they did. But you've got the word of God. And so Jesus and John are saying, you've got to take a leap of faith. It's about faith. And what's that faith based upon? It's based upon the word of God. It's based upon the truth of the Bible, believing in what the Bible says. And so that word of God is what's vital for our understanding. For that word of God not only speaks about the forgiveness of your sins and your own resurrection, that word of God has the power 
the ability to put faith in your heart. The Holy Spirit, that divine presence of the Holy Spirit, has that function of making sure that word of God brings forth that faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's that Holy Spirit who brings you into that one true faith. And so the word of God we depend on. It's the word of God which we are to touch. It's the word of God which we see. It's the word of God which impacts us. It does so in so many verses. For instance, Romans chapter 1 verse 16, which says there that the gospel is the power of salvation for all who believe. Or go to Romans chapter 10 verse 17, which says faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard in the word of Christ. Or 2 Timothy chapter 3, which says all scripture is inspired and makes you, makes you wise unto salvation. Or the words of Peter in his letter, which says, even though you have not seen him, Jesus, yet you love him. It's the word of God that works inside of us. It's the word of God which is all powerful in this way. And so let us read and reread and meditate upon the word of God. Let us do so again and again. For it's that word of God that speaks of why Jesus gave his life. Why he rose from the dead. Doing it out of love for you and me. It's the word of God which speaks of, hey, it removes doubts and fears. For you and I who need rest because we're weary, we've got the presence of Jesus. We've got his presence in the word. We've got his presence in what we eat and drink, what we see and touch, bread and wine in Holy Communion. No doubt that that resurrection is certain and true. So there is no doubt that there is a Christ who lives with you. No matter your circumstances, no matter what you are going through, there's no doubt that he cares for you and there's no doubt that you will one day have that resurrected body and live eternal. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And there's no doubt about it. Amen. Amen. We pray. Dear Lord, give us such a faith. A faith, dear Lord, which rely upon your holy word and the truth, the facts that it speaks. Grant us that strength and uplift us during low times that we might also know of your living presence with us. So bless our, our feeble and humble efforts at times, but strengthen our trust in you, knowing that there's no doubt that what is stated in your word is factual, it is true, it brings us an overwhelming joy. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, the resurrection and life. Amen. Please stand. And let us speak those words of faith boldly in the words of the Apostles' Creed. With that conviction, let us proclaim together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for a brief announcement. Hello again. A uh, couple announcements. Uh, Social Ministries has uh, reminded me that there, there are envelopes available in the back for the Ukraine. So if you wish to make a donation to help out that cause, 
Um, so that they are available now in the back. And I think there's some more in the Nantex. Uh As well as, um, I know Hope Day is coming up uh, June 4th, uh, and they're looking for volunteers to help with the event. So please let them know if you're interested in volunteering. Uh, we get a T-shirt. I think it's the same one we did like last year. Uh, and oh, Mother's Day is coming up as well. So not to forget. Yeah, that. Nick. And yeah, Nick. I don't want to forget Mother's Day. Yeah, Nick. And my mom. Okay. The one's looking at you. I know. Long, well, <laughs> Dawn. Dawn. By the way, Mother's Day is her birthday. So. Oh yeah. really? Yeah, yeah, whoa, yeah, so, whoa! 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 Yeah, so uh, if you look a in the double. back, please fill out. There's a form to fill out for some roses. Uh, and um, let's see what it says here. Uh, what day? You want it by Wednesday, May 4th, please. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Um, I have a question. I, some of you, the money for Ukraine, anybody know where is that going exactly? Anybody? Lutheran World Relief it's going to? Thank you. Okay, just, just curious about that. So that's really helping those um, who had been displaced, I would assume there. Yeah, and going that way. All right, thank you for that. Um, please encourage you all to um, make use of that envelope. Let us gather gifts for the Lord's ministry that others here in Patchogue and the community may know that Jesus Christ truly has risen. May we stand and sing and praise our Lord. and Savior on behalf of the church, the world, and one another. Lord Jesus, you stand in the midst of the lampstands, your churches, filling them with imperishable light. Thank you for rescuing us from the darkness of sin. Thank you for dispelling clouds of grief and despair. Thank you for leading us into your everlasting life. Grant us grace to lead all people to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. breathe your Holy Spirit upon your church and fill it with your peace. Teach it to proclaim the gospel graciously and boldly so that all people may adore you as their Lord and their God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. dwell in the midst of those who are persecuted for your sake. Make them lampstands that shine with the radiance of your glory and grace. Fill them with the oil of faithful witness and steadfast endurance. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our pour your Holy Spirit upon this congregation. Give us a hunger for your word, a thirst for your mercy, a vision of your love for all people, and a desire to serve you by serving others in your name. 
Lord, in your mercy, give us the persistence and kindness of the disciples who sought out Thomas and drew him back into your dear presence. Help us to share with those who have lost hope, the hope that is in us. Lord, in your mercy, we beseech you to give to the leaders and peoples of every nation that peace which the world cannot give. We especially pray for the people of the Ukraine. We pray that you would be with them, a presence with them, with your holy word, to give them comfort. But we also pray, dear Lord, that weapons be laid down and that there be peace that would reign among all nations. So work within all people there, dear Lord, to bring forth a solution to that area of warfare. And teach us repentance and humility. School us in generosity, gentleness, and justice. We need all these things to flourish. But mostly, we need your spirit working your will in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, give wisdom, courage, and integrity to our military and first responders, and to all who serve the causes of liberty and justice throughout the world. Fill them with a love for your good and gracious will. Use them to establish justice, safety, and hope in places sorely lacking in those good things. Lord, in your mercy, heal the bodies, cheer the spirits, and illumine the hearts of all whose lives are shadowed by sorrow and pain. Especially remember Paul Darnell, who continues healing in a rehab facility, and continued prayers of healing and strength for Susan, Doug, John, Victoria, Tom, Colin, Tony, Samantha, Jen, Kim, Mary Lou, all being treated for cancer. And we pray not only for healing, but strength and protection for Devin, Linda, Bill and Lisa, Joan, Hugo, Kathy, Lisa, Brian, Millie, Gloria, John, Tony, Marion, Jane, Allison, Dee, Chris, Hunter, Mike, Alex, and Nicole, and those that we also remember in our hearts. Renew in all of them, dear Lord, the gifts of faith and hope. Raise them to fullness of life and restore them to joyful fellowship with all who love them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you promise your resurrection life to all you have redeemed. We entrust into your care our beloved dead. Wipe away the tears of all who grieve. Fill us with the faith to follow you fearlessly and to encourage one another cheerfully. Lead us to your Father's house, where with all whom you love, we shall with endless joy acclaim you as our Lord and our God. Lord, in your mercy, grant to us all that is in accordance with your will, dear Jesus, and accomplish your salvation among us. For you are risen from the dead and dwell in majesty with your Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We entrust ourselves to you now and pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us first confess our sins to God our Father. Merciful God, 
Loving God, we confess that at times we do not share in the joy of the resurrection, but are caught in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontent, grumbling, and anxious. Forgive us for not sharing in the good news. Forgive us when we find it more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk the joy and encouragement of new life in Christ. Call us back to your ways, O God, to seek hope and reconciliation, restoration and peace, in the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Christ is risen. The stone is rolled away. The tomb found empty. We are called to this new life, a life of forgiveness and reconciliation. Be assumed, assured that God loves you and desires great joy for your life. Walk forward on this journey of faith, knowing your brothers and sisters are with you as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever living God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is a true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, after he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you drink this, and do this in remembrance of me. Let us sing together the Agnes Day.
Oh, let the ancient words impart Words of life, words of hope They give us strength, help us go In this world, wherever we roam Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words end.
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name, amen. May God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. amen.
Now go forth in faith and serve the Lord.